All right, continuing on with the heads up battle against Smiley in the first tournament of 2024. We're in exactly the kind of situation we wanted to be. Heads up for the title. This hand, you know, we're basically have a small chip lead at this point um, with blinds of 75, 150. Milkovic limps in, Negroni raising it up with an inferior king. Shmilkovic going to come along and another seven figure pot out there. 1.15 in the middle between these two. We have Smiley limping on the small blind, um, uh, limping from the button small blind, which is we said in a previous video. This is going to be very, very common when your head's up with the big blind Annie. It's partly why I think actually. From a viewer perspective and a playability perspective, heads up would be better without an ante because it would create more raising and folding pre-flop and a little more dynamic play. Unfortunately, what the big blind ante does is it promotes this line. Limp, check, 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 check. Turn your cards up. You see, that's the predominant line when you have a big blind ante. Watch enough of these streams and you'll see that, how often that happens where it goes limp, check, 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 all the way to the river. If you have a pre-flop raise, which you're more incentivized to do, when you're cutting out the bottom 20% of your range and you know the big blind isn't as priced in, um, you'll see a lot more C betting, you see you know, some three betting, all these types of things. But with the limp, with sorry, with the big blind Annie, it's a limp fest. And listen, limping is pimping, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? And it just helps me, frankly, but I just still think from a viewer perspective, probably more interesting without the Annie. But that's neither here nor there. So he limps in with the King Six. I'm in the big blind, and I have the King of Spades, Deuce of Hearts. You want to mix in some raises of limps. You can't just pe let people limp all day. You know, you have to push push back sometimes. And you're going to push with, you know, your strong hands, of course, some of your weak hands. And then a lot of these, like, big little. So this king deuce, I block ace king, I block king king, I block king queen. I block a lot of hands that will continue for a raise. And I also have the worst kicker, so it's not like my hand plays all that well post-flop. This is a situation where raise and take it here is, is the desired goal. So we make it 500,000 a little over 3x, right? You want to make it like, you know, depending on your strategy going in and how you're splitting your ranges, at this stack depth, I think three and a half times the blind is fine after a limp. Well, he makes the call. Every hand matters so much right now as we see ace, five, six on the flop here. The percentages show that Smilkovic is a massive favorite, but still gotta consider Negrano could have that ace it is in his range can't imagine Smilkovic folding here for this bet but how willing is Negrano going to be to keep firing perhaps a third heart yeah I mean hey we, we, we've seen him fire before and it was against Smilkovic remember when he had the jack seven check raised the flop and barreled off on the turn now the flop is ace of hearts Five of diamonds, six of hearts. I continue for 350. Why so small? Dial, dial, dial. You made it 500 before the flop. Dial, you're only betting 350. So that's pretty customary, frankly. Whether it's a three bet pot out of position or uh, a raise after a limp, you know, your size is going to be pretty small on a lot of flops. This is one where we have massive range advantage. Okay? He limped and just called. So we can cut out all the big ace stuff. He doesn't have any of that because that stuff's limp jamming. Frankly, a lot of his little aces are doing that. Like ace four suited, ace three suited, he's going to do that. So we have a shit ton of ace X. He doesn't have quite as much because we raised, he just called. So this is a flop where it's going to favor my range. So I'm going to be betting. When a, when a board favors your range, you should generally be betting. I'm not saying automatically, but if you do automatically until you want to you know, get in the streets and, and play around with creativity and stuff, I'd say there's nothing wrong with automatically betting here. That's what I do, 350 on the swap, and he calls. So, when he calls, what the heck does he have? Right? I think he peels here with some king high stuff. You know, let's say he has uh, two diamonds, like, you know, king three of diamonds, king seven of diamonds. He may limp, you know, he may, he's going to peel with these king highs. He's also going to peel with a six. He's also going to peel with a five. If he did have an ace, obviously he's going to continue. If he has a hand like seven nine, seven eight, 
He's peeling all those hands, any gut shots, stuff like that. So there's a decent number of hands that he's peeling with that are what we call marginal. What really strong hands can he have here? Probably not pocket fives or pocket sixes. Those might limp raise, those might raise themselves. Not as, like I said, not a ton of ace five, ace six. And those hands, I think on that board, he might actually choose to raise them himself. So really it's five, six. That's what we're like, you know, the, the strong hands we're worried about versus a lot of marginal mediocre stuff and some draws. Oh, speaking of the third heart, Negreanu, despite having only the deuce of hearts, all of a sudden picking up some equity here. One point eight five million in the middle. Daniel's coming with seven fifty. Not making it easy for his opponent. Oh, wow. Negreanu again gets it done on the turn, just like you said, Donnie, and extending his chip lead now to the point where he can even afford himself a small misstep. Yeah, Negreanu stretching out that lead nicely up to just about 60% of the chips in play. So the turn card now comes the five of hearts. Okay? As we said, one of the, card, one of the hands you can have is like king five, he could have a six, he could have a five, whatever. But he also has all those straight draws. It is a heart as well. We have the deuce of hearts. I know it's not a very good flush draw, but hey, it's a flush draw. It is an out, as you know, if he doesn't have a heart. So here we can take the lead. And in this spot, we're representing ace with a heart. We could have a five as well. We could have a flush already. We can have a full house already. We have a lot of good hands. So I go ahead and bet pretty strong. I bet 750 into 1.8. Again, less than half pot, but a very sizable bet. He's sitting there with king, six, middle pair. What does he do? He doesn't have a heart in his hand. Well, think about it. What range is he facing when that can raise his limp, bet flop, bet turn? Now, from his perspective, he only beats seven, eight, seven, nine, but I don't have a lot of seven, eight, seven, nine. Those hands check back. Seven, three, queen, jack, check 10 with a heart, like king, queen, offsuit hands. So when he factors in my entire range that raises his limp, C bets flop, goes decent size on turn. A lot of that's going to be an ace. Some of it's going to be a five. Again, occasionally the bluffs are going to be like king jack with a heart, you know, queen jack with a heart, stuff like that. And even against those hands, um, he's going to lose a lot on the river anyway, right? So from his perspective, you can totally understand why he decides to fold. Now, if he calls here in the turn, if he calls here in the turn, you're in a, you're in a pickle. I think you probably have to shut down a lot because his turn call is going to be much stronger. His turn call is going to be a five for trips. He's going to have some flushes, some ace with a heart type stuff. Um, not as much of like the seven, eight, seven, nine anymore when the hearts get there, unless it's off suit and he has a flush draw. So you're looking at a narrow range of hands that like you can barrel off and probably too many that call. So when I make this turn bet, I'm probably shutting down the river. Not always necessarily, but that was my intention here. Again, I'm targeting a six or the draws. If he has a five, he has a five. I don't know. I don't know if he has a six or a five. We'll find out, right? We've got to make this bet, you know, keep the story going. Again, I still think we have range advantage here because we can have a king five just like he can, but we also have the ace with the heart stuff um, and all the other really, really good hands. So, you know, we go ahead and bet it and he takes his six. Suh! And just takes his six, six and shoves it in the muck. Another pot for uh, aggression, bravo us, on to the next one.